Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are celebrating something that, um, you know, women have celebrated quietly for a long time, um, back in the early 1900s. Um, but now we are celebrating together uh, International Women's Day. I am Maria Mana, and I've got a great group of musicians here with me. Um, and I'll introduce to you, I'll introduce them to you in a bit. So the songs that we've selected this evening are songs that were made popular by um, ja female jazz legends. And um, I first, I have to say thank you to Oprah Winfrey and uh, ABC TV uh, for airing um, Megan's little piece uh, from five to seven so that we could have our show at seven. So thanks, Ope and ABC. Um, but anyway, we've got some legends that uh, we'd like to honor this evening. Um, we're not going to try and, I'm not gonna try and sing like them. I am going to sing their, uh, their material, so, and to honor them. Now these women are women that have had some pretty hard times. Um, but you know what, they came through and um, they're absolutely legends to us. I hope you enjoy our songs. Um, so, let me start by telling you that the first artist um, I wanna feature is Dinah Washington. Do you know her name was actually Ruth Lee Jones? Right. Ruth Lee Jones was born in 1924. Uh, by the time she was 15, she had become a gospel star and three years later, Lionel Hampton discovered Dinah, who began a career that saw a record pop, jazz, and country and blues songs um, while becoming a particular favorite among black people who felt she embodied their struggles and resilience. 
Having been cited as the most popular black female recording artist of the 50s, she was a 1986 inductee of the Alabama Jazz Hall of Fame and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She is a Grammy winner and she passed in 1963. The song we're going to do for you this evening is September in the Rain and it was written by Harry Warren and Al Dubin um, and it was uh, published in 1937. Um, also, I want you to know that all this information that I am reading to you is online. I didn't make any of this up, so um, feel free to go and check it out. So here is September in the Rain.
Here we go. We've got, um, yes, all right. Uh, D. Stephen Lindsay and Bat Amy Henson and uh, Carmen Yay! Jackson and Kim Greenwood. Hello. Kim. Yes, hello, everybody. Yeah, hello. The, camera? the cameras are all around. <clears throat> the cameras are all around. And this is great. Thank you so much. Now, listen, um, we love playing, but we also like eating. And we pay our rent with your wonderful donations. So um, we want to say thank you so much for making your generous donations to us. I think, where is the website? Where do they donate? Artsonview.ca forward Arts slash donate. Artsonview.ca forward slash donate. So that would be great. Thank you so much for your wonderful donations. Um, the second song that we are going to feature um, was done by none other than Billie Holiday. Now, Billie Holiday's real name was Eleanor Harris or Eleonora Fagan. Um, she also went by Lady Day, of course. And um, she was born in 1915. And her mother was 13 years old. Can you imagine that? I mean, these are hard times. Um, I just have to tell you this, that um, she never read music. And in 1938, she became one of the first women of color to sing in an orchestra comprised of white people. And when she began to work with Artie Shaw, she was not allowed to sit on the bandstand with her fellow musicians. On other occasions, she was subjected to racial slurs while performing and made to enter and leave buildings through the kitchen rather than the front door. But here's the kicker, ladies and gentlemen. In 1939, she wrote, along with Arthur Herzog Jr., the song, God Bless This Child. And the origins of this song stem from a fierce argument that she had with her mother. Over the years, Billie Holiday had given a great amount of money to her mother. But when she herself was short on funds, her mother refused to help her. And she said to her, you know what? God bless the child that's got his own. And there by the grace of God go I. Billy died in 1959. Here's God bless the child. Them that's got shall have them that's not shall lose so the bible said and it still is new mama may have oh papa may have but god bless the child While the weak ones fade, empty pockets don't ever make a way. Mama may have, but Papa too may have. God bless the child who's got his own, who's got his own.
gonna bless you and God's gonna bless you to church just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit um wonderful do we have oh my goodness well we've got a lot of people chatting here richard way karen way heather atkinson we got the ways in the house house. Lori clayton yeah yeah all right wow hello everyone oh christopher grew my husband's watching with either a scotch or a glass of wine. I don't know which one that is, but I don't think he knows how to communicate on this. Uh, Okay, I'll say 20 bucks at scotch. I was thinking the same thing. Okay, I'll I'll take the wine. (laughs) Now, you... 20 bucks. All right, Chris, you have to say if it's scotch or or wine. I don't think he knows how to type in there. Okay, just just text us. Yes, text us and let us know if you're drinking wine or scotch, because I'll owe her 20. I'm not talking on my microphone. Or she's going to owe me 20. Just text Maria and let us know, because uh, we both think it's scotch, but... Any, get, anyway, I um, we digress. I just, I just want to say that um, when I had the idea of putting this together, I thought it would have been just wonderful to celebrate with other women who are musicians. And um, the coming together of this has been really wonderful, working together, rehearsing uh, the emails. And um, I want to thank you, the public, for uh, giving us a platform to... Um, advertise and to make this possible and to the media that has covered this because we wouldn't have been able to let anybody know and of course um, Arts on View and Herman's here and and a big shout out to Tom for um, facilitating this Um, so thank you. Ashley you guys have a song you're doing. Yeah do you want to talk to to this song? Sure somebody's going to talk which song is it that we're I think I think we're going to Am I am I in? Am I on? I'm on. Hello, everybody. And this is Maria Mana, Maria Adventure Mana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's always an adventure, Maria. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, I will introduce the song, and I'd like to say that um, we're doing uh, Strutton with some barbecue by Lil Hardin. And Lil Hardin is the first lady of jazz. She was married to Louis Armstrong, but actually she was the better musician at that time. She probably taught him to read music, and eventually they divorced because he was unfaithful. Oh, well. But these songs were actually recorded by her in the Hot Fives and Hot Sevens, the very first jazz recordings of any importance. And she doesn't get any credit for being the musical director, the musical director, a woman. And so uh, that, was, that was a big deal. Now, this song, she actually, she didn't sue him for it, but she got custody of it later in 1938 when they finally split up. And they died the same year. Yeah, she, she was doing a... Um, she was playing for Louis Armstrong's, uh, it was a memorial kind of concert, and she died uh, on sitting at the piano. I am serious. In 1970, I think it was 76. She was born in the 1880s, and she died in 76, I believe it was. And so without further ado, this is Strutton with some Barbecue, written by Lil Hardin. Thank you. 
That was sensational. What's that called? Strutting with some barbecue. Strutting with some barbecue. I mean, how do they come up with these? That's just <laughs> beautiful like and bizarre. Sounds like hell strut to me, just walking down the street in New York with some barbecue. Actually, what it meant was walking along with a fine lady. Oh, it, wow. uh, barbe barbecue was a term for a fine looking lady. Get me some barbecue. That barbecue is so good you want to eat it. Well, oh, all right. right? Okay. A wow. fine looking lady. Wow. I really so like that, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew awesome. Holmesy, Peter Gray, Cy Nickel, um, Mary Crooks. Mary, we love you. We love all of you. We Thank do you love all of you. This is beautiful. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you all this evening. Now listen, this um, next song um, is, is a beautiful song. You probably all know it. I'm going to tell you this. Um, it's an Etta James song. I mean, Etta James was known for a lot of beautiful songs, especially at last. Uh, but we're going to do something else that she's done. But Etta James was born Jamisetta Hawkins. And she was born in 1938 to a 14-year-old mother named Dorothy Hawkins. Wow. So, I mean, these women really struggled. Uh, but look where they got. I mean, they worked so hard. And I am just in awe to be able to perform songs that they performed. Um, so at the age of five, Etta was known as a gospel protege. She suffered so much abuse in her life that I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to talk about it. If you want, you can Google it. It was just too traumatic um, to even read it. But she suffered a lot. Listen, she got three Grammys. And uh, she recorded over 40 albums. She died in 2012. And um, although she's known for the song At Last, I'm going to be doing, well, we're going to be doing Sunday Kind of Love, which was composed by Barbara Bell, Anita Leonard, Stan Rhodes, and Louis Prima, and was published in 1946. And I'm going to dedicate this to my niece, Hannah, and her husband, Chris. I sang this at their wedding. Don't screw it up, Maria. You also sang it on the news. The and I sang day. it on the news last week, absolutely. Someone to withhold, to 
Tuesdays, well, they grow cold. I need a love for all my life to have and to hold. I want a Sunday kind of a love. You know that we've got the great Zoe Guiguerno. Was that right? Guiguerno? Can you say your last name for all Gigano. of us, Zoe? Guiguerno? I was trying to be Portuguese. Oh, that was dramatic. I liked it. Guiguerno. <laughs> Guiguerno. 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 So, are you born and raised on the West Coast? Yes. And then you went to New York? She was, yeah, she was in New York for seven I mean, years. I'm sure it's a much longer story than this. <laughs> But we're going to have a song um, that, um, that Zoe wrote, uh, and she's going to sing it, and uh, we're going to feature that in a little bit. We look forward to that. And we've got Sherry Clayton on drums. Yeah. Woo! This is, ex this is an exciting band. You guys are loud to applause, you know. <laughs> we have two very, 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 very special and exceptional human beings um, that have graced us with their presence for International Women's Day celebration here. And it's Joan and Bonnie, and they have both dedicated so many years of their lives to uh, the longevity and, and the organization of Herman's Jazz Club. So let's give a great round of applause for these yes. two incredible women that have chosen to join us this evening and all their hard work and dedication to keep this establishment happening. Thank it was you. just so great to see you tonight. And you are allowed to applause because now you're publicly uh, exposed. Exposed. That's <laughs> really nice. <laughs> and again, for the, any newcomers this <laughs> you evening. You know what I mean? Um, Ashley, remind me. It is... Um, um, there's also a way to donate because shows now are online and it's by donation. And it's to artsonview.ca slash donate. Um, and yeah. we do appreciate it. And you can donate to the venue and to the musicians. And I would right. say it's not an if or it's a we need the venue to survive and, and the venue needs artists to survive. So it's a symbiotic relationship here. And uh, it would be great if you can donate to both and uh, share. Share with your friends. Because share, share. sharing is caring. Right, Mary? Mary gets it. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Um, this next artist... Her actual name is Nancy Sue Wilson. She was born in 1937, same year as my mother. Uh, she sang in church. All these women sung, sang in church. They, I think they all got their start in church. Uh, she sang in her church choir at the age of five. She thought she would eventually become a singer. And at the age of 17, she attended college to become a teacher. And after her first year, she dropped out. And she followed her original ambitions of singing. Uh, she recorded 70 albums. She got three Grammys. Um, in September 2005, she was inducted into the International Civil Rights Walk of Fame at the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site, and she was a major figure in civil rights movements. She died in 2018. One song, uh, you got to check it out on uh, YouTube. It's uh, called Guess Who I Saw Today. It was written by Murray Grand with lyrics by Elise Boyd. Uh, and the song was originally composed for Leonard Silman's Broadway musical review, New Faces of 1952, in which it was sung by June Carroll. Now, you've got to do yourself this favor and check out June Carroll's version and then check out um, uh, Nancy Wilson's version because June Carroll is very... Um, She's very demure and very proper about the way she's delivering the message to her loved one. And then Nancy Wilson delivers 
the message. You, you got to check it out. So we're going to try to do this song justice. I hope you enjoy. Guess who I saw today? so late coming home from the office did you miss your train were you caught in the rain no don't bother to explain can I fix you Martini. As a matter of fact, I'll have one with you. For to tell you the truth, I've had quite the day to Today, my dear, I went in town to look around for something new and thought I'd stop and get a bite when I was through. I looked around for something near, and then it occurred to me where I had parked my car There was a most attractive French cafe and bar It really wasn't very far The waiter showed me to a dark secluded corner And when my eyes became adjusted to the glue I saw two people at the bar who were so in love that even I could spot them clear across the room Guess who I saw today my dear Never been so shocked before. I headed boldly to the door. They didn't even see me passing through. Guess who I saw today? Guess who I saw today? Guess who I saw today? Miss Otis regrets she's unable to lunch today. Madam, Miss Otis regrets I'm unable to lunch today. I'm so sorry to be delayed, but last evening. Lovers lane I strayed Madam Miss Otis Regrets I Saw You Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, I just love that story. I love that story. My husband said, don't throw the Miss Otis thing in there. And I said, you know what? Nancy Wilson threw it in. And anybody who knows Miss Otis would understand that, well, I was Miss Otis. And, you know, last night I found out that he was cheating. So I got a little bit crazy and I just killed him. And, and then that's why I couldn't make my lunch today. <laughs> 
story. <laughs> but you see, June Carroll is so demure when she says that, and her husband is actually drinking his martini, and then at the very end, when she says, I saw you, that's when he puts his newspaper down. It was it's so anticlimactic, but, um, but with uh, Nancy Wilson, she just, just, I love it. She just calls it out. She just calls it out. Um, okay, who else do we have? Okay, we have Yvette. That's my mom. Gigano. 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 We have Yvette. Hi, Yvette. <laughs> we have Heather Atkinson, uh, Carol Cordero, and uh, Stephen Lindsay. D. Stephen Lindsay again. Rich Clemens. Hey, oh, nice. Joan Copin, Jean Coyle, Mary Lou Sim Rudner, and Chris has still not sent in a message. So. <laughs> We don't know what happened to him. Maybe he drank the scotch and just fell asleep or whatever. Um, okay, so the next vocalist that we want to feature this evening is um, Carmen Mercedes McRae. Mm. So Carmen was born in 1920 and she studied piano um, at the age of eight and she's considered one of the most influential jazz vocalists of the 20th century and is remembered for her behind the beat phrasing and ironic interpretation of lyrics. McRae was inspired by Billie Holiday. She recorded over 60 albums and performed worldwide. She won many awards and was nominated for seven Grammys. She died in 1994. Uh, the song that we're going to do is um, Stardust. It's a popular composed uh, a popular composition uh, that was composed in 1927 by Hoagie Carmichael with lyrics added uh, by Mitchell Paris in 1929. You realize I got all this stuff off the internet, right? I did it like this morning. So it's like what I read, I put it on here and it's not pretty. We need a teleprompter. <laughs> I need a teleprompter like those politicians, you know? I need to go. Anyway, doesn't matter. The best is yet to come. All right. Th that, that's the next gig you have at Herman's. You'll have a teleprompter. I'll have a teleprompter. Okay. Honestly, I think it's a great idea, Maria. I know. <laughs> Artsonview.ca forward slash. All you people remember. All right. Of twilight time steals across the meadows of my heart. High up in the sky, the little stars climb, always reminding me. Down the lane and far away Leaving me a song that will not die Love is now the stardust of yesterday The music of the years gone Why I spent the lonely night Dreaming of a song, the melody It haunts my reverie And I am once again When our love was new And each kiss an inspiration But that was long ago Now my consolation is in the stardust of a song Beside a garden wall When stars are bright You are in my arms The nightingale 
Musicians do communicate like uh, with our ears and our eyes and hand cues and stuff, but it's really this whole COVID thing's amazing because we're wearing masks. Because uh, normally we would have been leap, lip reading, and she's like going, yeah. <laughs> and we're both, I think, trying to say C sharp. So it's just like the, the twitch of the, the mask. twitch I'm of like, the mask, and I'm like, I really C-sharp. hope we're saying the same thing to each <laughs> other right now because we can't read each other's lips. But it's all in the eyes too now. It is, but it's in the eyes. The eyes doesn't say. C sharp. Right, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think we're, yeah, I think that, I, I think we're together, and we were, so that that was really great. Great hey, to work with you, Zoe. You're an hey, incredible Zoe. bass player. Zoe, Vincent. We're happy you're uh, on the West Coast. Hi, Vincent. Vincent, Zoe, we're watching. You're awesome. Hello. Christy Farrar, Amid, Amidon. Carol Cordero, Jean. Okay, Maureen Washington is clap. Maureen. Oh, love you, Maureen. Hey, the best is yet to come, sister. Oh, the yeah. Best is yet to come. Oh well. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so this um, next song is um, the next artist that we'd like to feature is Sarah Lois Vaughn. Uh, she was born in 1924. And she was a choir singer and a piano, le- and she took piano lessons at the age of seven. Um, she loved accompanying others, then uh, started to accompany herself. Her, na- her nickname was Sassy and the Divine One. She won four Grammys, including the Lifetime Achievement Award. And her adopted daughter is Paris, an actress who is married to the hockey player Russ Courtnell. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, wow. She died in 1990, and uh, the song that we're going to do that um, Sarah did beautifully is uh, Lullaby of Birdland, which was written in uh, 1952 by George Shearing with lyrics by George David Weiss. Lullaby of Birdland, that's what I always hear when you sigh. Never in my wordland could there be ways to reveal in a phrase how I feel. Have you ever heard two turtle doves, Bill and Coo, when they love? That's the kind of magic music we make with our lips. When we kiss And there's a weepy old willow He really knows how to cry That's how I cry in my pillow If you should tell me farewell and goodbye Lullaby of birdland whisper low Kiss me sweet and we'll go Sky up above, all because we're in love.
Zoe, ladies and gentlemen. women they're going to do another instrumental so yeah, featuring. featuring Zoe Zoe I'm just giving up on saying your last name I I really practiced it for so because I'm Italian and I thought Portuguese Italian quiguerno quiguerno and it's like nope you got it all wrong so um <laughs> uh, Zoe ladies and gentlemen oh and please um tell us about the song you know, I, I don't mind when people mispronounce my last name. I just, like, it gets the idea across, you know. And, um, but, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Maria. For, uh, we're going to do a tune that I wrote last year called Radar Stations. And um, when, the, when the pandemic arrived, it, it coincided with, uh, with me going on a, a nine-week-long second date with someone I had just met. So it was a very surreal time in many ways we were up in the mountains uh kind of isolated in this big old farmhouse for these two months and didn't see another soul that whole time and that was your second date yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> and did you go on a third uh no no no, no third well that's one <laughs> hell of a second date i'll tell you <laughs> um forget about so. the third you got a great song out of it Absolutely. Sorry for him or her. Or <laughs> and around the same time, I got a letter from a friend trying to remember something we had gone through in the past. And, and he said, I guess I don't really remember the details. I just remember what it felt like. And I, I thought maybe that might be what uh, this past year might seem like down the road for a lot of us. So this is called Radar Stations.
fog wrap around us We couldn't see beyond our Zoe Gigano, G U I G U E N O. I'm going to go Dot home. Com. Drive home. Gigano, 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 Gigano. I can't look at it spelt though because I'll, I'll screw that up. Gigano. That was such a beautiful song. So yeah. beautiful. Beautiful. Um, so, is there anybody else we need to thank? Are we just, I, I guess. Um, Nicola for also oh and Sam so Sam is a publicist here for um, uh, for Herman's and um, so she put listen this is funny I, I got a story it's gonna be quick okay listen so so she puts this out to everywhere and and everyone and um, I, you know really I mean I'm surprised that ABC didn't contact me about you know uh, an interview but they did let me know that they are going to um, air her show first before mine. But anyway, um, I do want to tell you that I got a call from five journalists. Are you all watching, you journalists? Because I gave you some good time. Um, anyway, what I did, and they're all from um, UVic. I think they were from UVic. They're all in the same class. And so, I'm, I, you know, by the third one, I, I said to the third one, you know there's like there's a bunch of you calling me. Is nothing else going on in Victoria? And and this is the story of the day, because like the Times colonists didn't call me. Actually they they did do a write-up and thank you, Mike Devlin, 
But um, so anyway, I've got five students. Can I please, can I please have your grade at, at when your teacher grades the paper? Because I want to make sure that the, not only was the content good, but you did a good job writing. And uh, I wouldn't mind reading it too. So um, I would love to hear, get some feedback on, uh, on your piece that you wrote. And you know what I did? I made sure that I gave them each a different story, like a, something to write about. So they didn't write about the same thing about uh, me or my life or whatever. So I'd, I'd really like to see that. Okay? All right, good. Got that figured out. Um, okay, so Betty Carter. Good Lord, Betty Carter. Betty Carter. Betty Carter was electric. That's the one word I could use to describe Betty Carter. Betty Carter was amazing. She was born Lily Mae Jones. God bless her cotton socks. Lily Mae Jones was born in 1929, same year as my father. As a child, this is where it gets sad, Carter was raised to be extremely independent and to not expect nurturing from her family. Even 30 years after leaving home, Carter was still very aware of and affected by the home life she was raised in and was quoted saying, I've been far removed from my immediate family. It's been a lonesome trek. There was no real closeness where the family urged me on or said, we're proud of you and all that. No, no, none of that happened. While the lack of support from Carter's family caused her to feel isolated, it may also have instilled self-reliance and determination to succeed. That just gets my heart. She studied piano at the age of 15, but only attained a modest level of expertise. She received one Grammy and five nominations. She died in 1998. Here's a song she wrote I am going to try and do it justice, and I just hope that we do. And Betty Carter, wherever you are, if you're hearing this, um, you did an amazing job with this song. I hope we do you proud. It's called Tight.
speed but then she also recorded it at double that speed didn't she yeah and then it goes into mr gentleman um which it, it'll take me a couple of years to learn that part uh so but betty carter that one was for you all right so we have um <laughs> i love peggy lee now i'm going to tell you something about peggy lee she was born in uh, 1920, and she was uh, Norma Dolores Eggstrom. Uh, anyway, she ended up with Peggy Lee, and at the age of 17, she was a lead singer in a six-piece band. Um, Google her name, and um, you'll see a bunch of really interesting things about her. Uh, but you know what? Here's something that's interesting. She developed her trademark sultry purr, having decided to compete with the noisy crowd with subtlety rather than volume. She says, I know I couldn't sing over them, so I decided to sing under them. The more noise they made, the more softly I sang. When they discovered they couldn't hear me, they began to look at me. Then they began to listen. And as I sang, I kept thinking softly with feeling. The noise dropped to a hum. The hum gave way to silence. I had learned how to reach and hold my audience softly with feeling. She received one Grammy, 13 nominations. The song is Fever. It's written by Eddie Cooley and Otis Blackwell. And the great Peggy Lee died in 2002. Here is Fever, softly. No, I'll sing softly and with feeling. You guys play. Play loud enough so they can hear you. Yeah? You know, let's slow it down just a little bit more. the night. 
right. Everybody's got the fever. That is something you all know. Fever isn't such a new thing. Fever started long ago. Maria, you what did you do? Know this. I had to write out the words, right? Because I, 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 I haven't sung any of these songs before. So anyway, I'm on font 30, but I um, was running out of room, so then I had to reduce to font 14, and I couldn't see the last line. That's why I... And, but you know, you just make it up, and that's what happens in jazz. I'll tell you, I need to go get my eyes checked personally uh, myself, because um, I look at music, but I, I can't actually really... I read music. I just like my eyesight. Uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I can't really read it, but I can see the dots go up and down, and I generally it <laughs> it helps. Um, so that was fun. But did you get the effect? How it was just really soft. Yeah, it really yeah. did. That yeah. was great. That was a lot of that fun. That was grooving. That was we grooved. When These ladies are. Do a song like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, when all women yeah. do that song. Yeah. You yeah, betcha. it's a totally different thing, right? Hey, so I got a proposition. I just, I just don't think we should be doing this once a year. Uh, I think we should be doing this more regularly. What do you think? Yes. What do you think? Yes. Thank you both of you. Thank you. Although I'm glad that International <laughs> Women's Day has brought this whole thing together. But yeah, yeah we definitely sure. need to do it. You know, for sure. At least twice a year. <laughs> twice a year would be if great. Not four times. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, Bat says, oh, Sherry, Kim Greenwood. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing, Maria. Love Peggy Lee. That is, that is, LOL. Me too. The great Betty Carter. Okay, anyway, thank you. Thank you for, um, you guys are all, oh, and by the way, Chris is drinking wine and scotch, so we both won. <laughs> Tomorrow morning is going to have a, la, that, that's going to be a, la. you know, I used to really be able to drink whiskey and scotch, um, and, uh, it makes gives me a heavy head yeah. as, as I get older. It's I'm like, you have to do oh, it I don't know if this is worth it. Is the next morning? But you have to be consistent. If yeah. you drink it every day, that's then you my don't problem. Get a is I'm not consistent with my whiskey <laughs> drinking anymore. That's awful. I'm not trying to endorse <laughs> drinking by any means. But anyway, um, okay. This uh, second last song. 
No, third last song, because we've got two songs and an instrumental. Um, we're going to feature um, or bring to light Shirley Horn. Her name um, was Shirley Valerie Horn. She was born in uh, 1934. She played piano at the age of four. Uh, in 2001, from com uh, complications from diabetes, led to the amputation of her right foot. Um, the one that she used on the piano's um, expression pedal for sustain um, or quiet elements crucial to the moods of her ballads. Subsequently, she lost much of her right leg, forcing her to abandon the piano bench for the first time in more than six decades and altering the balance of singing and playing. In the interim, Horn um, has kept working, performing one or two concerts a month. Uh, but she had to rethink her approach, and for the first time, Horn held a microphone rather than singing into one planted at the piano. Where once she could become lost in her reveries, Horn now had to focus outward facing the audience, not just the music. And uh, she uh, won a Grammy. She had nine nominations. She died in 2005. Here's Once I Love, uh, Once I Loved, uh, written by Antonio Carlos Sobim with lyrics by Vinicius de Moreas, I hope I said that right. And she did it, she took so long in singing the song that I joked with the girls, I said, you know, I could drive to Alberta and back and this by the time the song is done because it was, it's just so long, but we're going to do it in cut time. <laughs> we're gonna cut the timing on that. But it's such a beautiful, beautiful song and just sit back and, and um, enjoy. I like this whole whispering thing. You like whispering? <laughs> I really don't. I can't hear you because I'm blind and deaf. How fast? How fast do you want this? Okay. This is a story of so many people who have loved and lost and loved again.
Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I have a round of breaks apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think the key was switched. We did a switch Rooney on that one. Sorry, Maria. I it's okay. I could make you stay. <laughs> But you know what? It's life. That's what happens. You know, it's it's good. Now you guys have another instrumental, don't you? All right, we do. This is where we get wild. Okay, I am going to leave it to you, wonderful ladies, and then stick around for the finale because it's big. <laughs> it's true. True story. True story. So I'll secret. send a shout out for the drums to Viola Smith, who was a big band drummer way back in the time of Jean Krupa. And she was a really terrific player in an all women's big band. She'd have her solo and, and she lived to close to those mics yeah. around your head as you can. She lived to a hundred and seven and played drums and drank a glass of wine each day. Hey. Past a hundred. Wow. Nice. So that deserves a shout out on a women's day. Yeah. So this is by uh, this is a free jazz thing, and uh, Monique and I do this sometimes. Throw on a recorder and sometimes get a thousand views and sometimes get six on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. But we're going to, uh, we didn't rehearse this, only we have a basic idea. So it's a free jazz thing. All right.
this is a time when you know you musicians just feel each other right you just feel the groove right is that how that works because i had i got up to come here and it's like nope not yet and <laughs> i just wow you guys are amazing that was beautiful i really enjoyed it yes, yes. all right the last Is this uh, YouTube video on? What what's your channel, Sherry? Clayton. Sherry Part, Clayton. Pardon? Yeah. Sherry Clayton. Sherry Clayton. Check it out on YouTube and like it and subscribe. I would yes. say. Yes. <laughs> Did you write that? In fact, if you haven't already you subscribed to up. Herman's Jazz Club's YouTube channel, I would strongly advise it because then you'll be notified when when shows are happening here. <laughs> Sorry, we're having Thank you so much to Tom for doing sound. Thank you to Arts on View. Thank you to our technical director, William. He's a yes. He's an incredible for sure. incredible man. I just want to let Nicola. you And I just want to let you know we're wearing a little bit of purple today um, in um, honor of women. Um, purple signifies um, loyalty and dignity, and that's why we thought we would choose the color purple to wear today. So, yeah. So thank you for sprinkling purple around. Um, so our last song, of course we couldn't have a concert without featuring Ms. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Jane, as she was called, uh, was born in 1917, uh, was told that she didn't have the look to front a band. She wasn't pretty enough. Oh, Can you imagine? <laughs> Excuse me is right. Uh, but despite all that, she became the first African-American woman to win multiple Grammy Awards in 1958. And she had been dubbed the First Lady of Song. By the 1990s, Ella had recorded over 200 albums. How do you like that for fronting a band? Um, Ella lost both of her legs and her eyesight oh, wow. to diabetes. And confined to a wheelchair, she stopped recording and touring in 1994. She won 14 Grammy Awards and sold over 40 million albums. She passed in 1996. She was well, also the first woman to run an all-male big band. Was she? Yeah, yeah beautiful. And wow. I, I also know someone else around here that has a big band. I do. Yes. Actually, you need to talk about that. Yes, them. you need to plug your big band. Okay. I don't. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So Ashley is wearing a lovely face mask. I left with, mine at yeah, home, sorry. With the Victoria Jazz Orchestra on it. And uh, we are trying to raise some funds to do uh, some recordings and some shows, probably not until 2022. Uh, but if you do happen to stumble upon the concerts at Chez Monique, I'm hoping that Zoe will come and do something for us at some point and maybe do her new album. Um, and these are shows once a month, generally late at night uh, on Saturdays. And uh, all of that is in support of the Victoria Jazz Orchestra, as are the face masks, which you can buy. Uh, just get in touch with me. Find me on somewhere in the Internet. And thank you, Maria, once again for having us. Yes, it, it's been a lot of fun. I just want to also let you know that um, I have created the British Columbia Vocal Society and we just got our um, charity status. Whee! Yes, so um, check us out, um, BC Vocalist Society online. We hope to help um, you know, BC vocalists and uh, mentor students and things like that. So check it out, it's the BC Vocalist Society. And um, I just wanna say that I am, I am proud to be a woman. I am happy to have had this opportunity. I wanna thank everybody um, that took the time to do this and, and work with me. Um, and together we are strong, right? So the sisters stick together and, um, and we are doing great things around the world. So thank you for tuning in. We will end this with the ever popular airmail special, which was written in 1941 uh, by Benny Goodman, James Mundy, Charles Christian, Ella first sang this in the 1957 Newport Jazz Festival. Um, and you could stick around and listen to it or not. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Airmail Special. Brundiri, 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 undiri, 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 undiri,
Me wanna go home. Mama, look at Boo Boo Da. Hush them all, go away. Mama, look at Boo Boo Day. Hush them all, go away. When the moon hits your eye, like a big pizza pie, that's a more. Oh, oh, hey, 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 oh, hey,
Yes, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, God bless you all. And until we see you next time, my next show is going to be, oh, if anybody has to plug a show. I have um, a tribute to Judy Carlin coming out in uh, June. June, uh, uh, for her birthday, it's on her birthday. It's on her think, birthday, yeah, it'll be her 99th birthday. That's correct. I have a show next um, Thursday here with Avram uh, McCaggerty and Shanna Dance. Uh, actually, it's it's going to be three band leaders getting together and we're all singing different tunes and some harmonizing happening. So that's going to be really fun here at seven o'clock. Well, like here, like Wonderful. the Norman's YouTube channel. So yeah. give, a, give a huge round of applause for Maria Mana to, for Thank putting you. this together. Thank you. It's really exceptional. Thank you. And I couldn't have done it without all of you and with Tom. Thank you so much. Thank you to the audience here. Um, two people, and to the rest of the people out there, thank you, good night, God bless you all, until we see you again, thanks.